Okay, so we've done three of the Phantasm movies. It's time to jump over to the fourth one, Phantasm IV, Oblivion. Phantasm IV, Oblivion stars Reggie Bannister, A. Michael Baldwin, and is directed by Don Coscarelli. What's up, guys? It's time to jump back into the Phantasm reviews. Uh, now, if you have been following this review series, you'll know that my good friend Cody Leach has also been reviewing these at the same time as me. So when this video dropped, his video dropped too. So after you watch this one, go over to his channel and watch his review. If you've already watched his review, I thank you for stopping by and watching my review. We might have different reviews on this one, actually. So looking forward to jumping into Phantasm IV. And let me just say, I actually went on location. I was going to review this movie in front of this old abandoned building that was out in like the bad part of town. And uh, you can see some video of it here. I recorded the whole review uh, and it was on my iPhone and I, I had a bad feeling about it, but I figured, you know, I'll do it and I, I can at least show some B-roll. Uh, and I wanted to do it because a lot of these movies are road trip movies, especially involving uh, Reggie. You know, Reggie, you see him at, at least in the last movie and this movie, he's going cross country. And he's always like either running from or going to the tall man. Uh, so I kind of wanted to get that vibe in the review. And unfortunately, I didn't bring my gear with me. All I had was my iPhone. So uh, I'm having to re-record the review, which is what I'm doing right now. And I gave you the long version of that. I'm sorry. But let's get right down to business. This will be a spoiler review, by the way. But quick plot synopsis. This one picks up pretty much where the last one left off. If you remember in the last one, Reggie was up against that corner and he had all those the balls the spheres covering him and the tall man releases him at the beginning of this movie because he's got one more game to play and i don't know why he didn't just kill him but yeah he, he's always got another game to play so he releases him and so of course reggie is back on the road which is cool i like seeing reggie on the road you know reggie we're going to talk more about reggie reggie's an awesome character and meanwhile um now if you remember michael uh, we had a Michael Baldwin in the last movie, which is good. It was good that he returned, but they made him pretty much a bitch in the last movie. Uh, it really sucked to have the original character come back and pretty much have his balls just squeezed right out of him. And I'm, not, I'm talking about his testa balls. So in this movie, we get the Michael that we got from the first movie. You know, he's got he's got a backbone, he's got a plan, uh, and he's got a he's got a ball in his head too still. And uh, that comes into play with the storyline because this one's very like almost psychedelic. You know, there's some scenes where he's like out in the desert and there's this one scene where like he he wants to kill himself. And then the tall man like sends him into this uh, other dimension uh, through one of the portals. And then he meets this, I guess you can call him the good tall man. It's not really the tall man. It's this other character by the name of Jebediah. And so there's a lot of that in this movie, that, that relationship between Michael and the tall man. They've always had this strange relationship with each other, even since the beginning. You know, before Michael met the tall man, he was just a normal kid. And what's cool about this movie, too, is they use a lot of deleted scenes from the first movie. They actually went and found a lot of this archived footage in a warehouse. And they were able to clean it up, and they actually used the deleted scenes some of the scenes in this movie, which was kind of nice, you know, kind of to, to go back because when I was first watching this, I was like, wait, do I remember that scene from the first movie? Is that a flashback? But no, which is kind of what they also did in uh, Glass. If you remember, uh, they had some deleted scenes from Unbreakable. I like when they do that. It's kind of cool, it's, especially if they serve a purpose. And now if they're just doing it just for, you know, hey, this is cool. This is gee whiz. I don't really care for that too much. But these scenes did kind of serve a purpose because it showed who Michael was as a person before the tall man came into his life. And eventually, you know, he gets the upper hand on the tall man. He creates his own sphere. So he uses his mind and his tenacity to overcome. And he creates his own, so I guess you could call it the good sphere. And he uses that to take out the tall man. But of course, we all know the tall man always comes back. You know, he can always come back through another body, whatever. But yeah, he always comes back somehow. Now let's talk about Reggie. I love the character Reggie. He's kind of like a blue collar Ash. That's what I like to call him. Speaking of Ash, I'm gonna mention something when I talk about like the behind the scenes, but uh, um, Reggie in this movie is kind of the same as he was in the last movie, uh, but he doesn't get to do as much. Uh, he's just on the road. And then he comes upon this girl named Jennifer, which uh, when Reggie comes upon these females, I always get 
kind of fishy like what's going on here is it, this could be one of the tall man's demons i don't know but uh this girl jennifer she was pretty much pointless in the movie outside of when he gets her into the hotel room he tries to fondle her while she's asleep what is the deal with reggie and these girls he did it in the last movie too this will never fly today but when he turns her over she actually has the uh the silver spheres for jugs is that the right term jugs and so it was kind of a creepy scene but reggie always provides the comic relief of these movies and this movie has very little comedy in it but there's one scene that had me laughing pretty hard at the beginning when he's fighting one of the demons and the demon pukes up the yellow goo in his mouth and it, behind the scenes he had to do that scene five times and i think that's hilarious now Going to the backstory of this movie, originally Phantasm 4 was going to be called Phantasm's End or Phantasm 1999, something like that, but it was going to be a much bigger budget. Uh, the tall man was already going to be in control of like the United States, which was going to be broken off into like three factions. It was going to be a pretty ambitious script uh, and it would have cost a lot of money to make. Uh, and, and I don't know if it was in that story or another story, but Bruce Campbell was actually going to be in there too. So a lot of money was going to be put into this thing, but of course that got nixed and eventually he got to make the movie, but this is at this point the lowest budget that he had. So he had to get really creative, which is a big pro I have to give this movie. Uh, if anything, when you want to get a movie made, sometimes you got to go uh, and pinch that penny as hard as you can pinch it, you know, squeeze every dime out that you can because it's on there on the screen. There's one scene where they had to go guerrilla style and they were in like downtown Los Angeles and it looks like that scene out of I Am Legend. You know, it's just completely desolate and you'd swear that they pretty much organized this whole thing, had the police shut down the streets, you know, fire department, all this stuff. No, they actually went out uh, 10 minutes before sunup on Thanksgiving and luckily nobody was on the streets. So they got in there, no permits, shot the scene in 10 minutes and then they were out. Sometimes that's what you got to do on a low budget. And the tall man in this movie, I don't know, for me, the tall man's getting to the point where he's like Hellraiser in this series. Um, at the end of the day, he only really takes up a couple of scenes. Most of the movie is going to be with uh, A. Michael Baldwin and Reggie. And th that's fine because those are two really great characters. And I don't think the tall man is one of those characters that you want to take up the whole movie anyway. But I would like him to be a little bit more iconic, at least in this movie. Because in those first two movies, I mean, he's awesome. The movies themselves are completely awesome. You know, so it's hard to not compare this movie to those first two movies. Same with the last one. But I think the last one had a little bit more fat to chew on. And I don't think the comedy in the last one was too bad a thing. It's not a good movie at all. But at least the comedy kept you interested. But I'm not going to lie, guys. Uh, this one right here, I was kind of bored through it. I watched it twice just so I could try to get through it. But, uh, you know, you, the low budget is so apparent on the screen. And at the end of the day, I wanted more out of the movie. You know, the problem is they made the second Phantasm, which is so good. Like, that's, a, that's like a, a five, on, five out of five movie. Love the hell out of it. And so to go from that to this is tough. And you can compare this franchise to, like, like say, the Halloween franchise. In the Halloween franchise, uh, you can have, you know, two good movies, a bad movie, two good movies, a bad movie. You know, you get what I'm saying and so on. Whereas this one, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And I hate when franchises do that, you know? It really sucks the fumes out of the franchise. And so for that, guys, I'm going to give this movie a two hours lost. Uh, and I've heard really bad things about Ravager, the last one. So it's gonna, we're going to be going into Hellraiser land with that one. Uh, and if you remember when I did the Hellraisers, that was a brutal franchise to do. So luckily there's only one more Phantasm movie for me to do. But uh, I think Cody liked this movie uh, more than I did. So now you got two different perspectives if you've never seen this movie. And uh, it's fun to review these movies with Cody. So uh, post in the comments your thoughts on Phantasm 4 Oblivion. Looking forward to hearing them. Uh, also be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do Free For All Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and Drum Dumb out.